don't think y'all can truly realize how much I wish I was making this stuff up. But you just can't do it. What is going on, y'all? Welcome to a daytime-ish video from Springfield, Missouri. Adventure how we got here. Like I said, it's just, <laughs> you have them good weeks and you have them weeks where you just say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. This is just not worth it. <laughs> but you tell her the terminal because we got the new hat. We got the, I'll show the right side this time. We got the elk hat. It's a proud elk hunter. I was happy to see that. I wish they had the Under Armour hats, but you take what you can get, right? So, good God. <laughs> I mean, you know, they say there's a driver shortage, and I don't believe there's a driver shortage. You can t watch some team videos on that. But there's a reason that drivers, the turnover rate is in this, in this industry is so dead gum high. It, it can be ridiculous. Oh, it's just so ridiculous. So, I made the video about the double book load. No big deal. That stuff happens. That didn't even upset me. Because I got that other load up to Arkansas and less miles, more money. That's all good. Um, and I'll address, I'm going to address a negative comment here in a minute, but I'll explain the story because it'll add to that for sure. So I got that Arkansas load. I got up Tuesday. I got to the customer at nine o'clock. It's one of the few customers I've ever been to that wasn't happy to see me because I mean my smiling face, but I guess they didn't want the product, but somebody ordered it. They had to take it. Right. So they had me unloaded in 45 minutes, 10 o'clock Tuesday morning, done easy send him a paperwork. Now look at the map, and I'm 200 miles from Springfield. And for those of you who don't know, there's a class that you go through an orientation called Slingshot. It's kind of a business class, kind of an overview of how things work. Well, I have another class called ACE2, which is an advanced business class. Uh, the TMC guys will notice TQM and advanced TQM. It's all about how to make money out here, uh, and especially as a lease operator prime. It's a good class, and they pay you 100 bucks for going. They put you up in a hotel for one night so you get a good night rest. And then they deduct or they defer your truck payment for that week. So instead of having the full thousand dollars, it's $26 over the course, whatever whatever the math comes out to be. Just for, you know, cause you gotta come off the road to go to the class and then class is important to them. So I say, you know what, let's send my fleet manager a message. Hey, I know they got the class on Wednesday. It's Tuesday, 10 o'clock. I'm 200 miles from Springfield. This week's shot anyway. Can I go ahead and take that class? And he says, you know what, let me look, I'll let you know. He says, yep, got you scheduled for that class. Here's a load, 90 miles from where you are, go pick it up, it goes a little east, up in Arkansas, pick it up, and then bring it to Springfield, to the terminal, and drop it Tuesday night, get your rest, and go to ACE2 on Wednesday. Awesome, that's exactly what I wanted. The plan came together, right? So, I go, I bounce the 90 miles, after the time I load, it's about, 130 when I get there. Your load's not ready. It's a drop and hook. It's a preloaded trailer. What do you mean it's not ready? But that happens in reefer, especially these these places. I won't say the name of the customer because I'm about to go off. But anywho, your load's not ready. We'll call you when it's ready. Okay, whatever. And they gave me a sheet of paper and follow the steps because does of the thingamajig that's going on. And so about six o'clock. I call back, and it is not the woman who was calling me darling and sugar. It was a dude who told me, it ain't ready. We're doing as fast as we can. We will call you when it's ready. Okay. I'm four hours from Springfield. Class is at 8 a.m. 7 o'clock, no load. 9 o'clock, no load. 10 o'clock, no load. Starting to see the pattern. Somewhere around 1, 1 I passed out and fell asleep. I was trying to stay awake because I could do it. I get the four hours and I get to Springfield, get that class. So about somewhere around two o'clock, I fell asleep and woke up in a panic at 6.45. Oh my God, 6.45, they called me. I didn't do it. Oh my God, now I missed ACE 2 and my load I didn't do and everybody's going to be mad at me and no missed phone calls. So the yard dog pulls up to me about 7.30. He goes, where are you going? I told him the destination for the load. Oh, oh yeah, that's in dock one. They're loading it. It's almost done. And so, okay. One eternity later. About eight o'clock, I get a call from the nice sugar darling lady. 
And she says, hey, it's in dock one. We got one more pallet to put on there. Pull up, pull in front of it. Don't hook up. I'll bring your paperwork. We'll get you out of here. Awesome. Pulled up, 8.15, 8.30, She comes out, okay, gets loaded, back up underneath it, but after you back up underneath it, don't move it because we had a new guy loading and we need to verify it was loaded right before you leave. Nine o'clock, 9.15, 9.30, All right, here's your paperwork. You're good to go. Have a great day. Great day. I've been here since 1.30 yesterday. Ain't no great day. But what the F ever. Just get to Springfield. I missed Ace 2. Talked to my fleet manager. Said, just go ahead and drop it. We'll find you a good load. We'll work around it. It's fine. So I drive three and a half of the four hours. Good old Seminole wind. Never let me down when I'm coming to Springfield. Braking system inoperable. ABS system inoperable. Seek service now. You just got jammed. Yep. So I pull in. I drop the load. I go to the shop. I said, well, hook up the computer. Hook up the computer. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong. It's just not, not just a faulty code. But we're booked out for two weeks. So you're going to have to take it to the dealership. So I didn't want to make this video in a hotel room. As I sit. Wait on a truck to be fixed. So I'm making it now. But what I was going to talk about earlier is one, good God, this industry will test you. This is why there's a driver shortage. Because a lot of people say, F this. I could be at home. I could be doing this. I'd rather do something that's breakdowns and out on the roads and customers. Because you see, then there's no accountability. The only person in the trucking industry that it ever seems held accountable is me. Because if I would have overslept and that load would have been bad, I would have gotten in trouble. If I'd have been late to pick up the load, I'd have gotten in trouble. If I'd missed a delivery appointment time, I'd get in trouble. Somebody book double books load, nobody gets in trouble. Somebody wants to take 19 hours. I spent 17 and a half hours in my sleeper berth before I finally got to move to the dock. There's nobody held accountable for that. Just the driver is what the driver is. He'll get over it. Here, I'll throw him a couple hundred bucks if he's lucky, if we approve his detention. This is why, there's not a driver shortage. There are plenty of people that want to drive. This is not people done with the BS. So, I'm happy. I have no idea why. I'm really not happy. I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm almost at that point where I'm too tired to care. <laughs> I just, it's like, I was like, but, but I didn't quit. I didn't go home. I didn't call another company. I didn't cuss anybody out because it ain't nobody's fault. That's trucking. You, I'm trying not, I'm trying to be nice for the YouTube. But nobody's held accountable except for us drivers. Luckily, thank the Lord, the truck is still under my bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty. I'm still able to get it fixed at no cost to me because it's not damage that I cause. Obviously, if I hit something. So I don't have to pay for it, except that I got to pay for it in the wallet with the downtime. But luckily, there's a plan. Ace 2 is available on Saturday. So, since I'm going to be here, I will have made no money this week. But I also won't have a truck payment this week. So, hopefully they get the truck fixed. Hopefully I can leave out Sunday. Sunday to Monday, Monday to Tuesday, Tuesday to Wednesday. Still got three days, make a couple bucks. Oh, and I want to address the negative thing. What I kept, what I, not a person negative, but I kept saying negative in the last video. And I got a, several questions on that. And this will tie into the truck payment. You know it's not a lot of people view it as a negative thing a lot of people think it's oh getting screwed this is not getting screwed it's part of the game every month you have a house payment that is due or rent payment that is due you have a car payment that is due you have car insurance that is due you have gas that you have to pay for you have electricity you have bills you have fixed costs that you have to pay well on a weekly basis as a lease operator i have fixed costs because of things and how it works and how it done, I'd say my fixed costs are about $1,300 on a weekly basis. Plus, I had to throw 200 bucks in fuel to finish that load that I got paid for. So if you say $1,300 and $200, that's about $1,500 that are my bills for the week. Well, if my load only paid $1,100 and I owe them $1,500, then I am negative $400. When I say negative, it's not, I'm taking a loss, I'm not working for free, I'm making money. I just got bills that you gotta pay. That's part of it. 
And so a lot of people set up an emergency fund. Now, that was, there is an option to have money deducted monthly or weekly from your check based on a cent per mile that you set as it's your money to when you go home, you come off home time, you've not worked for those days. Remember, I didn't work for five days. I chose to do that. That was my decision, right? So the bill's got to be paid somehow. If you decide to take two weeks vacation and it's unpaid, you still got to pay your bills somehow. So a lot of people's emergency fund. I do a little bit different. Um, I have a business checking account. Money goes in business checking account on Friday. I take my taxes and I put it in my business savings account. And then I pay myself a salary just so the whole world knows my business. I pay myself $800 a week. I take $800 out of my business account. I move it to the family account for whatever the family needs that money for. And whatever's left over the check just sits in the business account. So this Friday, when I, hey, you know what, maybe a detention gets paid or this gets paid, and let's say I make $100. Well, then I'll go into the business account, I'll move $700 with that $100, and my wife and family never know the difference. I'm prepared for this. I'm financially responsible for this. But when I said negative, I'm not like I'm out here taking cheap freight, or you just got bills. And you say, we well, don't have them as a company driver. Well, as a company driver, you do not have those bills. But if you don't drive for five days as a company driver, you don't get paid for those days either unless you have vacation and all that, and hey, good on you. I don't need that. The risk of lease is worth it for me for the reward of lease, but that's me. That's my dumb opinion. So there it is, guys. Two days of hell followed by dealership time. So I'm gonna go eat dinner, go, go cry in the back, read the mean comments about how stupid I am, and then I'm gonna get up tomorrow and see where the wind blows. God bless. Let's get rolling.